Hello, welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. It is mid-February and Phoenix have just announced their February release set. And I've seen quite a lot of excitement from people about this set. It certainly is a set of two halves, I would say, as you'll see when we go through this video. Phoenix have been releasing some more interesting models and some of their stronger models recently, but they still persist in releasing quite a lot of crap on their worst molds and they just don't seem to recognize um, that these molds are weak and obsolete. I actually had a conversation with one of the larger retailers recently and, I, and one of the questions I asked was, you know, why, why are these companies not improving what they're doing? Why are Gemini letting models through with hush kits when they shouldn't have them, with cockpits printed all over the place, with other issues? Why are Phoenix still using these bad molds when everyone knows they're bad and, and his answer was quite correctly that the reason is because people still buy them um, regardless of how poor the models turn out there are still plenty of people buying them they're still selling uh, he's completely correct unfortunately it is a, a sad truth that there's not a lot of reason for many of the manufacturers to get better because the models still sell even if they're rubbish. Obviously, I would hope that they don't sell to you, my good listeners, who are, I like to think, an educated bunch of collectors who know what's good and bad. Not just because I tell you what I think is good or bad, but because you've got eyes, and you do your own comparisons, you listen to other people in the hobby, and you can see the quality and the lack of quality sometimes. But it's clear that a lot of people can't, and presumably a lot of these people are just the sort of fair weather collectors um, who don't pay a great deal of attention or perhaps collectors in China who aren't listening um, to this kind of material or just idiots, I guess. Because <laughs> um, there are some moles that just shouldn't be bought. Uh, not many, I have to admit, and I'm not a purist, even though you might think so from yesterday's airlines. There are plenty of times when I buy a mold which I don't think is the best mold. Um, but when it comes to new models nowadays, I try to focus on quality. Anyway, February's Phoenixes. It is an interesting set of models and there are 14 releases to discuss. So as per usual, in the next short while, we will go through all of those, rank those from supersonic down to scrap metal and see where I think the gold is hidden in this month's Phoenix set. Before we do that, obviously, please subscribe to the channel and chuck a like on the video, why not? Leave some comments, you know, what do you guys think of what I'm saying? What do you think of the models? I'm always interested to hear other people's opinions. Check me out at Yester Airlines on Instagram and on Facebook. And obviously pay close attention to yesterdaysairlines.com. There's lots of cool material coming up. And there's been some really good stuff recently. If you've not been checking out the histories of the Malaysian and Korean A380s. Really enjoyed writing those pieces recently. And I hope people like reading them. But there's loads of cool stuff coming up in the coming weeks. So keep an eye out for that. But now let's get into the rest of this video where we go through these Phoenix releases. So it's an incredibly Boeing heavy release set from Phoenix this month. Of the 14 models, only one is an Airbus, and we'll start with that one. It is a Lufthansa A340-600 registered D-A-I-H-P. The A340-600 is hardly um, a stranger in Lufthansa colors in 400 scale. This will be the 13th. Um, model released by the manufacturers but obviously there have been um, two primary liveries and a couple of special schemes releases have been made um, by well, four different brands in the past there's been a dragon wings brand from eons ago there have been a few herpers um, and a couple of gemini's but mainly it's been phoenix that have been putting out lufthansa a340 600s and as everyone knows, the, the A34600 mold from Phoenix is, is very nice. It is 
one of the few places where Phoenix really still are the best in show um, for an aircraft type and I really like the mould. So nothing wrong with it. Um, in terms of releases, Phoenix have made Lufthansa standard colour A34600s a couple of times before, um, but both of those are quite a long time ago. The most recent was in 2013, so we're talking a, a clear decade ago that they last made one of these. They have made Lufthansa A34600s more recently, but they've been either in special schemes or in the new colours. So I think this is going to be a, a sought-after model. A lot of these older Phoenix A34600s aren't easy to come across in the seconders market, and I'm sure this one will do fine. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll put this one up in the two high flyer it's a, a good start it's hard for them to go wrong with their a34600s to be honest because they are such nice models but as we move out of the airbus category and into the boeings it's uh not quite such a good start so we've got a selection of 737s next and the first two are both air china 737 800s um you don't really care what the registrations are. They're both effectively the same model. They've both got winglets and they're both wearing a Star Alliance scheme. These will be the 34th and 35th Air China 737-800s. But interestingly, looking back through all of the ones that have been made, nobody has made a Star Alliance scheme version of the aircraft. And that should make these more interesting. But as you know, if you're a regular listener, I just can't get over how obsolete the Phoenix 738 mold is. Um, that duck nose, those dreadful engines and pylons, a really crappy landing gear, and just kind of looks like it's been slightly melted. Um, and obviously Phoenix's cockpit window printing on 737s is diabolical. So, even though these should fit nicely into my collection criteria, because I've got a lot of Air China, I ain't going anywhere near them, they're just too bad. And this is the sort of thing I mean, I'm not going to be shelling out 40, 50 dollars or 40, 50 pounds um, for a model which is going to look mediocre right from the start. In fact, I wouldn't even pick these up on the second market for half that price. They're just not going to be good. And you shouldn't either. Not that any of you collect Air China, I imagine, anyway. Um, so for me, 737-800s from Phoenix really um, have no place other than in that gas guzzler category. I don't think they're so bad that they should be in the scrap metal area, but... They're yeah, not a million miles away, and when they've printed the cockpit really, really badly in the past, then they definitely probably do deserve to be in there. So um, I'll put these in to the gas guzzle area, assuming that Phoenix can get the cockpit roughly in the right part of the aeroplane. The next um, aircraft is also a 77-800. It's uh, T-Way Airlines. I talked about this exact plane uh, in the last JC Wings video because JC have announced it as well. It's that Pokemon jet, another Pokemon jet. I'm sure I moaned about Pokemon last time, not going to do it again. Uh, it's got all the same problems that the Air Chinas have got the mold and the printing is going to be rubbish, even though it will be out before the JC one, which itself isn't going to be particularly good either. It really wouldn't surprise me if NG models release this exact same aircraft. I hope they don't, but they probably will. So I wouldn't waste my time with the Phoenix version or the JC1 to be honest, even if I was a collector of T-Way Airlines, which I'm not. So yeah, yet again, this one is, is clearly just gonna be sitting down there in the uh, gas guzzler category, um, which is the place where Phoenix 737-800s go to die. Mm -hmm. We've got more 737s next, and we've got a pair of Icelandair Maxes. Obviously, Icelandair have this new scheme, which is nowhere near as nice as the old scheme, but does at least have these color variations. Here we've got um, a TFICB and TFIC. Did I say B? B and D anyway. <laughs> One's green, and one is um, pink, I guess. Uh, it's quite nice the different colors, but. This scheme is not particularly exciting. More concerning, though, is the fact that uh, the Phoenix 727 Max mold is also not um, particularly good. It's nowhere near as bad as their next generation 737s, I admit. The nose and 
um, cockpit area is actually quite good. But when you look across the rest of the mold and compare it to other 737, 800, uh, sorry, 8 Maxes, sorry, um, it's inferior um, to both the Gemini Jets, JC Wings version, and also the new NG models version. So yeah, these, these aren't really hitting it for me. And since NG models really have a thing for Iceland Air, I would again be surprised if you didn't see Iceland Air maxes from them in the past. Um, there has already been a Gemini Jets um, 737 Max 8 in the past um, in the light blue version of scheme, and it looked super nice. That was TFICE. And I'm going to put them down in the gas guzzler again. I, I'm not going to be soft and put them into workhorse. It's a bad mold. It's inferior um, in the undercarriage, in the engines, in the winglets, in the tail cone <laughs> to both the NG and Gemini Maxes. So yeah, just don't buy them. Don't buy them. And this is this point of video is where things start making look like I'm really giving Phoenix a beating this month. Uh, trust me, things do improve. But the next model is a, a Singapore Airlines cargo seven four seven four hundred nine V SFQ, and you know, frankly, anyone who's buying this, please don't listen to my videos again. <laughs> Surely everyone by now knows that the Phoenix seven four seven. 200, 400 mold is, is a piece of junk and shouldn't be anywhere near anybody's collection. Um, or at least certainly buy new ones anyway. Uh, it's, it's really bad. I'm not going to go through the details of why it's bad. You know, do a bit of research. Ask other people if you don't believe me. This one, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to ignore it. You know, don't buy it. I'm going to put it straight down in scrap metal. And it's not often that I scrap metal things. Um, there aren't many molds that are so bad that I put them in the scrap metal. But this one... This one definitely is. Fortunately, um, the Phoenix 747-8 is vastly superior to their 747 Classics. And the next aircraft um, is a Atlas Air 747-8. N863GT, this is an aircraft which people have been really waiting for. It is in the colors of Apex Logistics, at least on the port side, I think on the on the starboard side, it just has the Atlas Air Scheme. It is the last 747 that has been produced. It has got the special logo on the front um, for Joe Sutter. It's not especially large, the logo, and not as large as it might be, um, but nonetheless, it is, it's nice, and it'll be a nice release. It's a shame in a sense that Atlas Air are the last airline to get the 747 because the scheme isn't particularly exciting and it's a freighter. Um, but I can see this is going to be super, super popular um, and it should turn out really nicely. Obviously, Atlas Air is not exactly um, an unusual release. Um, there have been plenty of Atlas 748s made in the past, but this one is different, um, not just because it's got the Apex Logistics on it, but obviously it's got that logo for Joe Sutter and it is the last production Jumbo. So surely this one is going to be supersonic and the sort of model which um, a lot of collectors will be interested to get. And the sort of thing that I imagine will also be coming out from JC in time, but obviously JC Wings cannot produce models in the same sort of time scales as Phoenix can. This one will be out way before anything from JC. So yeah, this one is definitely supersonic. Okay, so we've got eight models through the release set and it's not looking like a particularly good month so far for Phoenix, but things do improve quite dramatically from this point on in the video um, as the remaining six aircraft are all on good molds and actually represent some more compelling and unusual releases for Phoenix. So the next four are all 767 300s. Um, the 767-300 is an interesting type in 400 scale um, and one which I don't talk about a huge amount. There are two or three, in fact there are probably three or four good molds for the type. None of which are exemplary and spectacular, but none of which are dreadful either. Um, even the old Dragonwings mold is decent, though it is not as good 
as the Aero Classics version, um, which itself is probably, because it's lack of aerials and it's older style undercarriage, not as good as the Phoenix and the current JC Wings, Gemini. Um, obviously, people tend to look at the Phoenix 767, I think, and think it's better than the JC because it has slot in wings. Uh, I actually really like both of the molds, and I do think that they both have pluses and minuses. They probably both would score roughly the sort of same if I did them in reviews, and I don't very often. Um, the minus for me for the Phoenix is, is that although it does have these nice slotting wings to the fuselage and it's not a cradle mount mold, um, as with quite a few Phoenix molds, they ignore the body fairing and it's, um, it's slightly slab sided around the wing um, compared to the JC, which although has that cradle mount in the seam, has a better fairing shape. So yeah, it's, it's kind of up to you which you prefer really. I don't have a strong opinion in either of these and I regularly am happy to buy both. Um, though I admit I don't have that many Phoenix ones, mainly because they don't produce the sort of airlines I'm really interested in too often. But I do have five or six um, air, and I've recently picked up an Aeroflot um, example which is super nice. So. So that's the mold really, it's a good mold and one of Phoenix's better molds. Now if anyone else produces a new 767-300 it's almost certainly going to be better but um, in the meantime this is a perfectly good mold um, and at least as good uh, and arguably better than the JC version depending on how you view that wing joint area. So solid and reliable and a good mold, exactly the sort of thing that Phoenix should be using more um, because that aren't that many 763s being made nowadays um, and certainly yeah, there's room for new models there. So I'll say we've got four this month and they're all, all modern 767-300s which does personally limit their interest from where I'm sitting um, but nonetheless I'm sure that won't limit their interest for many of you and, and obviously it shouldn't because hey it's your collection. So the first one up is Air Canada Cargo, and it's got the Air Canada Rouge kind of scheme going for it here, which is quite attractive. Though I admit I do prefer the current Air Canada scheme. Um, it's CGHLV, and uh, looks really nice. As I say, the mold's gonna be fine, so there's actually no problem um, with me not putting this one somewhere good, and I'm gonna put this one up into High Flyer. And similarly with the next model, which again, I think a lot of people will be interested by, especially because people seem to have a thing for Iceland Air. So it's an Iceland Air Cargo um, 767-300 um, registered TFISH. It's gonna be really nice. And and the big Iceland Air Cargo titles probably actually make this livery look better than the standard Iceland Air scheme. So again, I'm gonna put this one into High Flyer. It's gonna be really good too. Um, next up, we've got Japan Airlines. It's exactly the same model that was announced by JC Wings last month. But again, when is the JC version gonna get here? And this is actually an, an interesting, or this will be eventually an interesting comparison between the two, um, because you've got basically the same scheme on both of these extant 763 molds. But I just don't know when uh, JC will get their version out. Whereas you know that Phoenix will have theirs out in a month or so. So JA615J in this Disney 100 scheme, it's gonna look really good. Yeah, um, and again, I'll put this up into High Flyer. I think it's, again, another model which, um, for a lot of jail collectors and people who like Disney, I mean, which obviously there must be loads um, of Disney collectors out there, I thought this one would be very appealing. And we end with uh, a FedEx 767-300. This one has got the winglets um, and it's registered N68079. Uh, as I understand it, not many FedEx 763s actually have winglets. Um, and it was only a few months back that Phoenix made a FedEx 767-300, but that one didn't have the winglets and it had the 1767 logo. And I've seen the pictures of it and it looks like it turned out really, really nicely. In fact, it's, it's probably nicer than this one um, because this one's a stand scheme. And the wings don't excite me as much as they seem to others. Um, yeah, again, high flyer. There's no reason not to put these 767-300s in high flyer. I think they're all gonna look really nice and the sort of models that um, I'd like to see more of from Phoenix. So yeah, well done Phoenix for those, but you clearly um, you're just accidentally hitting these highs because you're also hitting the lows with your 737s and 747s too. And that leaves two models in the release set. Probably um, the next model is 
potentially the one that's caused the most hubbub. Um, it is a United Airlines um, 777-200N777UA, which presumably is um, their first 777, not a I haven't checked, but I imagine it is. Um, it's in the Battleship Grey scheme, um, and that's what's caught people's interest, I think, because it is an old livery. Um, there have been 22 um, United 777-200s made in the scale, but if you look back through the list, a lot of them are really obsolete models. Um, there have been, how many have been Battleship Grey? There's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine have been made in Battleship Grey, but um, they're all made so long ago. In fact, most of them have been made by Dragon. Even worse, one was made by Herper. You know, this is like years, this is like back at the beginning, Dawn or 400 scale, that Herper releases from literally from 1999. Um, so they're, they're incredibly obsolete. Um, there is a Gemini example as well, and really there's been nothing since um, because nobody's making American airliners uh, except Gemini in or 777s for nearly 20 years almost. Um, so it is really surprising to see Phoenix release this model. Um, it wouldn't surprise if NG get there, but to be honest, I don't know if their 777 is, is better than the Phoenix one. It, they've both got some issues. I personally prefer the JC Wings model myself, but... Um, but the Phoenix model is perfectly good. And I have to say, the Phoenix have been doing a better job printing their 777 cockpit windows in recent times. And I've been tempted by quite a few of their recent 777s. So, yeah, I can't not say this is going to be a good model. I think it will be a very, very nice model as long as they do a decent battleship grey shade. Um, so we'll be interested to see how that turns out. But in the meantime, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And this one's going straight up into supersonic. And the last model is also a 777-200. And this one is G-Y-M-M-R and it's in the colours of British Airways but much like um, those Air China 737s it's not just the standard colours it's the Alliance colours in this case obviously One World there have now been 29 um, 777 200s for British Airways made in 400 scale but yet again much like with the Air Chinas none of them have featured an Alliance livery. So this is the first time anybody has made um, a One World 777-200. So that makes it interesting. Obviously, British Airways is an airline that literally hundreds and hundreds probably of people collect. Um, this model can't help but be super popular and it is going to be good because as long as they can muck up the cockpit windows, then the rest of it should come out looking really nice. So once again, really good choice by Phoenix here. NG have been getting in and producing some BA777s in recent times, but not quite as many as Phoenix. And I'll look back through the list, Phoenix have made a surprising number. Um, so I think this is a good addition and will be super popular. And again, uh, I think this one deserves to be up there in the old supersonic land. So that rounds up the 14 models from Phoenix for this month. And as I think I said at the start of the video, it is very much a month of two halves. You've got some really, really bad models coming from Phoenix in a form of these 737s and that 747 from Singapore. But then you've got some outstanding um, choices and likely to be outstanding releases coming also in the, the form of the A340, um, the 747A, and these quite interesting 767 and 777s. Still very little of this actually fits near my collection criteria, but I am tempted by the Battleship Grey United, so I may acquire that and give that a review, you never know. But I have to say, half the reset is great, half the reset is awful. This is probably the first time I've never put anything in workhorse in one of these videos, so that in itself is interesting. Um, but yeah, that's it for this month's Phoenixes. Cool. Well, stay tuned, guys, for more content on the channel. And obviously, keep on checking out yesterday's airlines. Coming up, we've got uh, an article on the history of the Boeing 747. That has been a lot of fun to write and should hopefully be a good piece. Um, so I haven't written part two yet, though. <laughs> and hopefully it will come in the week after. Um, but yeah, lots of good content coming. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.